Hi, today we're going to look at how you can get amazing shadow detail with your analog photo. Cue the thunder. Today we're going to look at a couple of experiments we did with pre-flashing. So pre-flashing is a technique you can use to basically get more detail in your shadows. At least that's the theory. And basically what you do is you expose your film to light before taking your normal image. So for instance, you take a picture of a gray card or something like that. And then you expose your normal image, your subject, over that gray image. And basically what you're doing is just making a double exposure. On the first scene, as you can see here, we had this kind of um, park with a house in the background and some very dark trees in the foreground. Now, we meet the scene obviously with our Sekonic 508 light meter with the spot meter function. So I had Moritz, the cameraman, stand in the middle in the light on the kind of walk area and hold the gray card up and I measured for the scene. I also measured the dynamic range of the whole situation. And as you can see on screen, we had um, obviously the middle gray where Moritz was standing on that path. And then we had some very nice dark shadows, minus five to like minus four stops under that middle gray. And we had some highlights that were reaching up to about four stops over. So we had like a nice tonal range of like nine to kind of 11 stops, depending on whether you count like the clouds or not. Now we started out with obviously taking a reference photo to make sure we have something to obviously compare later on. And then we started out with our first image. So the way we did this is we put the gray card at a slanted angle in front of the camera, metered for it, and then underexposed by 10 stops. So we took an image of that gray card at minus 10 stops. Now we made sure that the card was evenly lit and it was out of focus and also it filled the whole frame. And then we used the double exposure feature on the FM2 Nikon and took a regular image on top of that. And that was the first pre-flash image. So then we just advanced the film so we could take our next photo. And that was then with minus nine stops on the gray card. And then we did the same thing again at minus eight stops. And then we did the whole thing again and again till we were at plus one stop. Now, luckily this day was a nice cloudy day. So we had very even lighting and we always made sure to watch out that the sun was never coming out of the clouds. Um, and always kind of made sure that we had even lighting, um, obviously on the gray card, like I said, and also on the background. Okay, so let's first look at the reference photo. Overall, we can see we've got a great exposure. Our kind of building in the middle is well exposed. The highlights look great. And we've got some really great shadows in the foreground with the trees that don't really have any rendition. They're just kind of black. Now, what you're seeing on screen are the images that were flashed at minus 10 to minus six stops. And these all look the same to the reference photo, pretty much. So from minus five to minus two stops pre-flashing, we can see that we get more and more details in the shadows. Interestingly enough, the middle tones, so like the building and stuff, stay pretty much exactly the same, and the highlights also, but we just get more and more details in the shadows. Like at minus two stops, we can see pretty much all the details in the tree trunk and the bark and all that stuff. Now with minus one stop, you're not really getting any more details in the shadows. You're just getting brighter shadows. Um, but you really have to pixel peep to see these kind of things. And at plus one stop, this is obvious, it's just completely lost its contrast and it's very washed out flat. Um, I guess you could use this as like a look or something. You use it creatively, maybe with some high key or something, but like for normal kind of applications, this is obviously not very useful. So let's look at what we learned from this first scene. So first of all, it's really great to see how much detail you can actually get in the shadows through uh, pre-flashing. So with minus two stops, you're getting like all the details in the shadows in the bark and the foreground on the tree and the branches on the right hand side of the image. I was totally blown away of how much detail you can actually get. And I really didn't expect it going into it. Now, something else we can see is that obviously, like I said already, the pre-flashing only really starts being effective at minus five stops. Anything below that really, you can't really see anything. So minus four to minus two stops would be a realistic value kind of for this scenario. I would personally shoot it at minus two stops to just get all the detail and then edit it to my liking later. And um, that's my conclusion to this scene. So here we have the reference photo for our next scene. So this is obviously nothing too special, looks pretty nice. Now, when we move on to minus three, we see that nothing is changing too dramatically. However, when we go to a minus two stops pre-flashing, we can definitely see that the shadows have been lifted. And compared to the reference photo, you can definitely see that there's a different quality in the image and it's definitely a very unique look. Now, at minus one stop, we can see that this look gets more exaggerated. And at plus one stop, 
we really get something very extreme. Now, personally, I think that this look in general is pretty awesome with the lifted shadows. And in this case, like minus two, minus one stop really looks pretty cool in my opinion. I do have plans and ideas on how to maybe explore this topic of pre-flashing even more. So for instance, using different colored, you know, pieces of paper or something to pre-flash and walls with texture and things like that. So playing with it from a creative standpoint and also trying to understand it more technically as well. I think that's going to be really interesting. So I've got a lot of work to do. Till then, cheers, I'm Martin. Bye-bye.